Hey folks, this is Paul from Easy Acres Homestead and I hope this video finds you all well. Got a little project here I've been working on all winter and you know of course my goal is to become more self-sufficient on my little acreage. So I decided to build myself a little cold frame Hugel culture bed. Now a cold frame is kind of like a mini greenhouse, but what is Hugel culture? Well, Hugo culture, put simply, is a permaculture gardening technique where a garden bed is built over a layer or layers of rotting wood. The idea is that the wood will act as a sponge holding on to precious moisture throughout the dry season and also as a long-term source of nutrients as the wood in the bed decomposes. Here I'm fixing to mill out some boards to build up my raised Hugo culture bed. My part of the country only gets about 15 inches or about 40 centimeters of annual precipitation, the majority of which falls during the winter as snow. Also at my elevation, we have pretty fickle weather patterns around here with hard frosts occurring well into spring and hitting early in the autumn. I don't have a well or water source, so if I want to grow anything, I have to be smart about it. I have to be smart not just about the garden bed that I build, but also the variety of crops that I choose to grow. This is that pine board that I milled out. I'm charring it with a torch in order to protect the wood and also act as a solar thermal heater for my garden beds. These boards will act as the front, back, and sides of my garden bed. The dark color will more readily absorb the heat of the sun and the carbon in the char will protect the wood from decay. A good friend of mine that lives off grid rather nearby turned me on to this idea that the old timers used to use on their old cabins. Here I'm sawing some of the side planks for my raised bed cold frame. As my property tends to slope to the south, I'm designing my cold frame to have maximum southern exposure. Now, I'm not amazing with the saw, and it takes a fair bit of practice to make a cut that's both plumb and straight, but I'm getting a little bit better at it. Now, I knocked together both the front and the back of my raised bed, put it in the ground about 6 inches or about 15 centimeters deep. As you can see, the front or the south facing side towards us, I have a rock border. The idea that the rocks will be warmed by the sun and act as a thermal reserve to warm the garden bed through the day and slowly release it out through the night. Here I'm putting down a layer of dead and rotten wood deep into the bed. The rotting wood will act as a sponge, uh, saving up that water and releasing nutrients as it decomposes. My summers are rather dry here and my soils are pretty sterile, so I'm hoping this helps build some organic matter into the soil. I'm all about soil amendment out here. I love passive solutions to active problems. Here I'm nailing up some of the sideboards, just kind of getting them measured and everything put into place. And as you can see, the snow immediately in front of the boards is melting a little bit faster than the rest of the snow around, meaning that that dark color is working. It's late winter here at the homestead and I'm getting ready for spring. I'm taking advantage of any day where I can when it's warm enough for me to work the soil. Uh, right here I'm prepping a row of peas for behind my cold frame. You might be able to see the branches behind me. Those are going to become the trellises. And because peas climb up a trellis as they grow, I want them in the back so they're not going to block or shade out the sun from my other plants, especially my cold frame. All right, it's time to build the top of the cold frame. This is going to be kind of the greenhouse portion. And you know, I have to say I'm pretty proud of the fact that the majority of the lumber I used, I harvested and milled from trees around my property. But right here, we got some store-bought lumber making its rare appearance here on Easy Acres Homestead. I'm just using 2x4s uh, for the sides and 2x2s two for the front and the back. And I'm um, securing the corners with some uh, scrap plywood that I had laying around. Behind me, you might be able to see my pea trellis uh, is already up and my jingly jangly trash scarecrow. Not sure if it works, but I think the noise and some of the movement might keep some of the critters away. Now I'm designing the roof of my little cold frame like a mini hoop house and I'm using these small juniper saplings for the raised support uh, for the greenhouse film. I chose these green saplings so I could bend them and foreign them to create the hoop house style top for my cold frame. And I love this machete for this kind of work. You gotta shave off just enough material from the side that you wanna bend from. Now to secure my saplings in the hoop frame, I'm using my auger to drill some three quarter inch, about one and a half centimeter holes to insert them into. And just kind of testing the fit and the angle that I want as I go. Now 
Now on the front for these uh, saplings, I'm just putting a little finishing nail through and cinching them on the back by pounding the nail the other way just to kind of secure everything. And uh, here I'm just kind of bending them over to shape and cutting them into length. Uh, that's one of the real nice things about using the, the native lumber that's around. It's free and also it works pretty well for my purposes. Now here I'm carving little channels in the back where I want to stick the end of the, uh, the saplings and again I'm going to throw a nail in there just to kind of secure them. I don't like to use a ton of hardware for this sort of thing. It's really kind of light duty kind of construction so shouldn't take much to hold it into place and uh, be done here in no time. Now because I have that green wood pushing out on the frame it does you know cause it to bend a little bit so I ran some 550 cord between them and uh, you know just to hold it together and it's got actually a nice sound. Hey man gotta find music everywhere you go. All right, so the top's pretty much done. Not much left to do except uh, staple this film over the top. Um, now, I couldn't find actual real deal greenhouse film. My local Home Depot, all they had was this clear plastic, and it looked like it worked pretty good, so I went with it. got it all stapled up and now just cutting the excess off and uh, leaving leaving myself a fair bit on the side so I can kind of tuck it under and and staple it down and uh, also you know having that excess there it'll act as kind of a sealer to just kind of seal any of the residual heat or anything in there like I said I like using all these passive kind of heating techniques uh, went much after this but to throw in a couple hinges in the back and screw it to the frame and there you have it, folks. Uh, you know, it's all done and ready for planning. And by incorporating the Hugo Culture concept in the cold frame, we should be able to keep me in greens easily through the fall and even into the winter. Well, I really hope you all enjoyed this, and let me know what you think might grow well in my little garden. From Easy Acres Homestead, this is Paul. Be well and be easy.